Okay. Oh, hold on. Give me air. So uh, today, this morning, I have one goal, and that is to make a sheath for, my God, that's gonna be massive. And uh, this one, this is the, uh, here's the funny thing, the guy that's buying this is in Luxembourg, and Luxembourg is 125 roughly miles, 200 kilometers roughly, south of where this was made where this originated in Solingen, in Germany. Oh, okay. This one amazes me at how, how that cleaned up. And I'm looking for a washing machine. The reason is all these rags, these polishing rags, my wife doesn't like me taking them home and running them through our washing machine and I understand, they're usually filled with grit and wax and polish and stuff like that. So I'm in the market for a cheap washing machine that I can stick here in the shop. And then once I wash them, bring them home and dry them. So uh, I'm gonna see if this lady wants to trade a $100 washing machine for, or, you know, if she knows anybody for this knife. It's, it's a local person that wants this. Okay, so uh, I brought my coffee, so you know I'm serious. I don't have any more of these. This was the last one I used to give these away. But uh, the person that used to make them for me doesn't work at the place that made them anymore. She retired. So I thought about these last night. Uh, I am really liking leather work as much as making knives. And uh, you know, they're just, it's a little bit aggravating. I did, I screwed up yesterday and uh, made a backwards sheath for this knife, uh, that's backwards. But what I thought about after I remade the sheath the right way, why didn't I just cut this off and then do what I did here? Because I made the same mistake here. So all I did was cut the belt loop off and sew it on like this. I could have saved that piece of leather. But uh, you know, I will find more knives like this that'll fit in there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go feed my cat. I'll let this air conditioner cool it down in here and we'll get our day started. I have two big sheets I gotta make today. We'll be back. Oh yeah, I just wanna tell you that this is sold and I did a little sanding and uh, this is 860, a number, it's a uh, Riddell. 860 and the six there's another six at the end and that's uh that's the length of the blade these are eight let me uh make sure they're eight my god it's so humid it's just so humid it's almost impossible to breathe out here yeah eight inches so they're all that's two inches smaller anyway that's gonna that's gonna be the very next one I work on after I uh, this wood, but maybe not. You know what? Uh, Andre sent me some really nice wood. I may use a piece of that. But anyway, I didn't get anywhere on this yesterday. Uh, Two twenty is the next grit. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna get to this today. Uh, my goal is to make them two huge sheets and. Uh, We'll go from there. All right, back to the leather shop. Drink a little coffee, answer some comments, and uh, get to work. Okay, I'm working on it. So what I do now is trace this whole thing out on the leather, and then I cut it off right here at the hilt, and then I trace that out on the leather, and then I cut this out of the paper, the webbing here, and then I trace that out on the leather. So I only need one pattern. I just gotta get it right the first time. Somebody asked a really good question. And uh, here's the answer. They asked why this one has webbing or a welt on one side, and this one has welt all the way around. 
And the difference between these two knives is the reason. See how this has a hilt? It won't fit down inside this type of sheath, which is a fold over sheath. Because they're different knives, and where you put the welt is on the blade side, so it doesn't cut the string every time you slide the knife in and out. And this has the webbing all the way around because this can't fit down inside of it because of the, the hilt, just like this. This has a hilt, big hilt. So it's gotta be a three-piece sheath like this because of the hilt. Otherwise, these are, these are much, much easier to make than these and they look better, you know. I've made so many that I can, you know, I can make them look nice. And these, this is my third sheath like this. And I'm really happy with how this come out, especially since it's my third. And uh, this little, oh boy, this is gonna give me some practice. Alrighty, I just, I thought that was a good enough question that I should probably answer it in a video. And, uh, boy, that fits nice and snug. Okay, but I'm almost done with my coffee. So I'm gonna get my leather out and get to, uh, get to tracing. Okay, man, I'll tell you, this is gi gigantic hunk of leather. And it uh, looks like it's going to be okay. Um, uh, you know, I was a little bit fearful that I could screw up. And if I did, that would screw up a, you know, $30 worth of freaking leather. And uh, I just sent, sent the email. I had somebody else that was interested in the small cleaver. But uh, the other person paid me for it last night. When I woke up this morning, I had money on my PayPal for the small cleaver. So... They're getting it. I do have another one that I have a bid in on that I may get a small cleaver and it'll be a while because uh, the auction doesn't end for like six days or five days, something like that. But uh, this morning, uh, anyway, that email, I sent that person the thought. I was just sitting here thinking about Charlie and I were on a front porch drinking coffee this morning, Memorial Day. And uh, I got to thinking way back uh, in boot camp. In 1977, I made it through boot camp, basic training, and what they didn't know was I barely, barely made it through. I mean, I had back trouble way back then, and it was all I could do to complete basic training. But I apparently they didn't realize because uh, I tested or I showed the drill sergeants that I was above average in the the pool of. GIs that went through boot camp and they only offered this to the above average young men that went through it and they offered me to go on to airborne ranger school and I'm thinking do you not know I just barely made it through boot camp I mean but what if, I was telling Charlie what if what if I had gone to airborne ranger school and become airborne ranger and been sent to a different place and never would have drove a truck uh, in Germany. You know, I drove a truck for the army. And uh, how different would my life be now? The places they would have sent me, uh, the people I would have known. Uh, i tell you what, the reason I came to Louisiana was a friend of mine who was my friend in Germany, my roommate, Mike Newman, who has since passed away with cancer, lung cancer. Mike was a chain smoker. And uh, anyway, he got out, came back to the States, and I was bumming around in Connecticut wondering what I was going to do with my life. And uh, Mike said, uh, hey, come on down to Louisiana. So I did. That is what brought me to Louisiana. One little decision. I decided not to go to Airborne Ranger School, and they sent me to Germany. And I tried a few, you know, I was a mail clerk, and then I was an armorer, and then they asked me if I could drive a truck, and I said, uh, of course I can drive a truck. Never drove a truck. I mean, I drove, you know, little, my dad had a dump truck and a five-speed Chevy snowplow, and, and uh, you know, he worked on trucks and snowplows and stuff like that, so I was around trucks. And uh, anyway, so they put me in a truck and uh, drove me around uh, the base a few times and said, okay, you're good to go. Here's your license. <laughs> so there there I was, a 17-year-old kid driving a truck on the German Autobahn. 
Yeah, it's just amazing looking bad at the little tiny decisions I made that impacted the rest of my life. The places I went, the people I knew, the jobs I had, the skills I had. My life is now, looking back over my life, I've had this life because I chose not to go to Airborne Ranger School. Tiny little, uh, it took me, you know, 20 seconds to say, no thanks, uh, I don't want to go on, I've had enough enough training and boot camp and I hurt enough I barely made it through this I didn't tell him that but uh obviously they didn't know that I barely made it through boot camp I thought about you know dropping out so many times because my back hurt so bad and obviously they didn't know that so uh you know they use a term now called gray man well back then I was gray man before I knew what they had had a name you know I tried not to stand out I tried standing in the middle of the platoon where they couldn't see me, you know, grimacing from pain. Uh, I had nowhere to go. You know, when I joined, uh, I was out of, out of options. And uh, if I had not, I mean, if I had not passed boot camp, I'd have been homeless and hungry. So, you know, that's why I was able to make it through boot camp. Okay, enough of me jabbering. Four minutes, five minutes. Okay, I thought I'd show you this. And, uh, this the hilt on this is so thick this is the hilt so thick that if I didn't if I put this on that there's not enough room for the the hilt will hit the back of this sheath and it'll push this out so far so what I'm doing is I'm adding these little pieces at the top I've tapered them like that and what it'll do is move the top of this out a little more where the hilt won't, won't pull the threads apart and stuff like that so all right I'm getting there um, I may just get one to made one made today I, I've told myself that I'm just not gonna stress and uh, hurry so uh, in my mind, I'm not worried if this, if I only get one sheath done today, that's good enough, and I'll do another sheath tomorrow. Okay, uh, I'm going to try antiquing this, but I got to get online to the leather working forums and brush up on the process. I have some antiquing stain here. Uh, I do not like that cordovan. I wish I'd never got it. But I have this antique black finish, and I forget how to use it. So the black is what I'm gonna use. I actually wish I'd gotten uh, brown or tan, but Cordovan, I do not. This is a very, it doesn't look anything like that color there. And what it looks like is pinkish. Uh, yeah, not, not a nice color. And I did a sheath and I disliked it so much that I put a huge fade on it where only a little bit of that color was showing. Okay, I'm getting to work. I still haven't got to the antiquing yet. I gotta let this dry. I got my fan on. I'm just gonna let it sit here and dry for a little while. And then what you do is you take your uh, antiquing stain and a dauber and you rub it really hard into the cracks and crevices really hard over and over and over and then you take a rag and you wipe it all off and what it does is leave the dark down in the uh, lowered areas this is going to dry a lot lighter uh, probably closer to that this is the dye that i used tan so i think this will be a really good contrast so let me let this dry a little bit and uh we'll be back in a little while okay just checking the fit checking the fit it's gonna work <clears throat> and uh, you see the difference in height and that's with you know two layers of uh, I don't want to uh, lift it up a little bit two layers of leather I'll tell you what let me put this here yeah that's gonna work just fine just fine I'm glad I did that okay uh, I'm about probably 30 minutes from sewing this is what the front looks like. Um, so far, I don't see the black antique making much difference. We'll see. I mean, you really don't know until it dries 
thoroughly like 24 hours. So we'll have a look at it tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to glue this, put my adhesive, my glue here and on here, and then let that dry for about a half an hour. And then I've got to drill down through these holes because uh, this is just too thick to hammer my uh, stitching chisel through. So next step is gluing this to this. All right, I am getting there. I'm having a drill. <coughs> drill the rest of the way because it's just too thick, like I said. But uh, almost there. I was wearing my arm out. I was just telling Charlie yesterday that I hadn't seen any deer out here in a while. Sorry, I had to mute that TV for YouTube gigs me on copyright. Usually there's more than one. If there are around here, there's two or three. So uh, I'm gonna roll over to the window a little bit, see if I can see any more around. Man, this is the biggest sheath I've ever made. Not done yet. Uh, the most sewing I've ever done. Now I have to dress my edges and I have to put my uh, snap a duber right there. It is probably about 1 32 o'clock. It has taken me this long to get this far, and I got probably another hour and a half to work on this. That's an all-day sheath. So, uh, I'll show you one last shot when it's all finished, and that will be the edges all dressed up and waxed and everything dyed, and then the uh, snap thingy up here. All right, we'll be back. Golly. It's nearly 3 o'clock, and I am finally done. Look at those edges. Look at those sexy edges. My God. Now, I'm gonna show you why I had to add that wedge. You can't even see it, it blended in so nice. But uh, you see how that blade is right at the edge of that leather? If I hadn't, it would have done one of two things if I hadn't added the wedge. It would have made this little hump back here more pronounced. And it would have made this start pulling away from the thread. So you can probably see how it is thicker here than it is here. This is where my little wedge ends. Actually, you can see it here where it ends. Right there. So there we go. Nearly an entire day to make one freaking sheath. This is the either the fourth or fifth three-piece sheath I've made, and uh, I'm getting better at it. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna go home, and I may take tomorrow off. This is the last night that I have to make a sheath for. I think I already mentioned this, but uh, this is made in Solingen, Germany. 
and the fellow that's playing it is in Luxembourg, which is, I think I already said this. If I did, I'm sorry. That was early, early this morning. Uh, which is yeah, right at 125 miles south of Solingen. Okay. Probably Wednesday or Thursday I'll get on this. And then uh, I have a... I might try to buff that out. You know, now that I'm getting better at this, um, I've actually sanded on this, on the knife, the uh, Schrade Walden 147. This had those kind of nicks. And I sanded them out by hand, and then I rebuffed them, and they all came out. Yeah, I'm going to do that before I send this out. Did I sharpen this yet? Yes, I did. Okay. I may try to get this. This person is local, and I, I have to mail some knives. And I may try and bring this. This would, I don't have anything that big. Let me see how long this is sheath and everything. This is an 18 inch. Yeah, 17 and a half inches. The blade is probably uh, 15 and three quarters. Let's just see. Huh? I still got a, got a, a final polish on the blade. Yeah, 15 and uh, about 15 and a half. Here, let's do it this way. Yep, 15 and a half, 15 and 5 eighths. That's a massive blade there. Nope, I cannot. Okay. Alrighty, that's it. Um, tomorrow, I'm more than likely going to take a day off tomorrow. I've been working pretty steady on these knives, and I think my wife wants to go to some things, maybe go shopping. I do want to go mail the knives that I have made. I have four knives made that I, I need to ship, and then uh, see if I can bring this to the person that wants it, meet them somewhere, because uh, it'll save me shipping, because shipping... But uh, even though it's local, shipping for something this size would cost me a lot of money. Alrighty. Have a good Tuesday, y'all.